Hi, and welcome to this section of the Physics 2 Tutor. And this section uh, is going to be the first of several sections where we're actually going to get into the core topics of what you usually think about when you talk about thermodynamics. Now, the word thermodynamics means thermal, meaning heat, temperature related, dynamics meaning change, uh, something changing, okay? So what we're going to talk about in these next several sections are systems uh, that are basically going to be exchanging work and heat uh, back and forth to do, you know, some sort of an engine or something to, to take heat and, and do useful work with it. So it's very practical because, you know, uh, back from the original steam engines all the way to the modern, you know, gasoline engines um, and also refrigeration and things like that are all basically built on the core topics that we're going to be learning about uh, with this section on probably the next three or four sections um, here in a row. So before we actually get to what we call the first law of thermodynamics, which is a very central part of the course here, we're going to build some foundation in this section and we're going to talk about uh, work and heat and what are called PV diagrams. It's kind of a cryptic topic. You could probably say you know what, what work is. So you can say, okay, we're going to talk about work. We're going to talk more about heat, which we've already talked quite a bit about in the past. And uh, we're going to also tackle something called a PV diagram, which is just a way of drawing it on a piece of paper to see what your machine is doing. So here we're going to start getting a, a little bit into some engineering. We're going to start talking about some machines that we're going to use to kind of understand um, how this thermodynamics business stuff actually works. So we're going to be drawing a lot of machines. One thing I want you to be real familiar with, just conceptually think about all the way through the next three or four sections, you're going to need to be very comfortable with the concept of a piston. Okay, so a piston would be just like what you would find in your car. You, know, you have four pistons or six pistons. You know, some kind of a circular uh, cylinder, and inside the cylinder is a is literally the piston itself is a, a slug of metal that's uh, cylindrical also, and it fits inside of that cylinder. And as your car goes down the road, the cylinder goes up and down, up and down. Uh, the piston goes up and down, up and down like that. And we know that somehow we put gasoline in the engine, and it it performs, you know, does some combustion up there and out comes useful work because we're able to propel this 2,000 pound car down the road. So we know that there's got to be some energy transfer going on there. This is going to be the section that we start to, to understand the most very basic fundamentals of how that can possibly happen. So it's pretty exciting stuff and it's very practical stuff. So keep that uh, thought of a piston in your head because we're going to use it a lot. So recall, what is work uh, from Physics 1? We talked a lot about work. The concept of work in Physics 1 was a force dotted with distance, um, which, which basically means if you have a, a distance that you're pushing something through and you're, you're, you're pushing on it at an angle, then you have the force dotted with the distance. The dot product just basically make, makes sure that whatever angle you're pushing at, you're only looking at the component of the force in the direction that you're pushing the object. That's all the dot product does. If you're pushing something in the same exact direction that it's moving, if I'm pushing on something in the direction it's moving exactly, then it's just F times D because that's what the dot product reduces to there. So that's review from physics one. We're going to take that and we're going to expand on it looking at these piston assemblies because that's going to tell us uh, some very cool things and we'll talk about that. So uh, we'll just write it down for your uh, enjoyment here. Recall, uh, in general, work is equal to force dotted with distance. Now these are both vectors. Force is a vector and distance um, is a vector. They both have magnitude, they both have direction. So when you dot them together, um, that's what you get. You get a number out. And that number is going to be how many joules of work you do in a system. This is from Physics 1. This has nothing to do with this course necessarily, but we're going to use it as a building block. I also want you to remember, in the back of your mind, something else. You're not going to quite know exactly where I'm going with this yet, but I'm writing this down because we're going to use this in a minute. Something else I want you to remember from Physics 1, pressure, the concept of pressure, and we've also talked about it in this, this class also, is by definition the force exerted uh, over the uh, surface area. So if I have, you know, a um, well, let's just say, you know, a, a, a piston. Let's go ahead and talk about pistons. The piston is sitting inside of the cylinder, and it's free to move up and down. And let's say there's some sort of pressure inside because it's compressing a gas or something. The pressure, remember what the units of pressure is. It's newtons per square meter. So that's why it's units of force over area. So by definition, when we talk about so many pascals, which is a newton per square meter, all it's telling us is in this room, for instance, there's... 
uh, one atmosphere of pressure is 14 pounds per square inch if you're going to use uh, English units. Um, and what it means is you have so much force acting on every square inch of whatever it is, the walls, it could be acting on the walls there, like if it's inside of a balloon or inside of this room. It's basically telling you how much force the air is, is ex expressing upon every object in the room um, divided by the area of whatever it is you're comparing it to. That's all it is. So it's, it's just looking at the force per unit area. Uh, okay, so that's important. And that's from Physics 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand on that. So let's look at this piston thing that we've been talking about and let's draw a picture. So what we're going to have when we talk about pistons, we're going to have, let's call it a cylinder, like this. All right, and it has a closed bottom, right? This is a cylinder like this, has a certain diameter to it, and has a certain height to it. And inside this cylinder, let's just say, 